So this is an adaptation to Dr. Petty's neck muscles. Uh, you can see this video on YouTube as well. I'll probably have a link in, uh, to it in the description below. So this is just an adaptation to it. I'm going to add some color, uh, present it a little bit more formally, and add just a little bit of innervation of the uh, neck muscles, as well as some of the tongue. So the first thing I'm going to add in are the attachment points and the labels. So we have the maxilla, auditory tube, styloid process, mastoid process, mandible, hyoid bone, thyroid bo cartilage, not bone, cartilage, cricoid cartilage, sternum, bone, and a, a superior portion of the scapula. So the most important thing to note is that these are basically all part of the skull. Everything up here, part of the skull. The hyoid bone, thyroid cartilage, and cricoid cartilage encases the larynx. And the larynx feeds into the lung. So basically air goes through here, so it goes through the mouth, and into the larynx, and down into the lungs. And of course the sternum and the scapula are, are part of the uh, rib cage. So the first group of muscles I'm going to add in are the group I would just call the throat stabilizers and basically what the uh, the red and the pink muscles they're basically the same but, but um, this group of muscles help elevate and depress the hyoid, thyroid, and cricoid cartilage uh, the complex of these cartilage and bones so that when you eat or when you move your neck you can still breathe through this uh, your, your your larynx. Okay, so I'm just gonna add the labels for these group of muscle. This group of muscles, we have the anterior digastric muscle in purple. I labeled purp it purple because it uh, so it does it doesn't confuse you um, that they aren't actually two separate muscles. It's actually one continuous muscle with two bellies. So we have the anterior digastric going from the mandible to the hyoid bone. We have the posterior digastric going from the mastoid to the hyoid bone. We have the mylohyoid going from the uh, molars, which mylo just means molars, to the hyoid. We have the genial hyoid, which goes from the genial, which is the chin, to the hyoid. We have the stylohyoid. We have the sternohyoid. We have the sterno thyroid, the omohyoid, and omo just means shoulder. We have the cricothyroid. We have the thyrohyoid. So you can see that all of these muscles are very logically named going from uh, named from one attachment point to the other attachment point. So for the innervation we have all of these muscles down here are innervated by ansa cervicalis and ansa cervicalis uh, is part of the cervical plexus. The other part of the cervical plexus is the C1 branch of the cervical plexus. So it's geniohyoid and thyrohyoid are both innervated by C1 of the cervical plexus. We have the anterior digastric and the mylohyoid both innervated by the uh, mandibular branch of the trigeminal nerve which is basically denoted as a V3 so 5 and 3rd branch. We have the cricothyroid, which is innervated by the vagus, cranial nerve 10. And then these two, stylohyoid and posterior digastric, are both innervated by cranial nerve 7, which is the facial nerve. Okay. The next group of muscles I'm going to add in are the tongue muscles in green and the labels. So the circle here is going to be the tongue. We have the genial chin to the glossus, the tongue. So chin to the tongue. We have the hyoglossus, so hyoid bone to the tongue. We have the styloglossus, and we have the special muscle that I would uh, keep in my mind, the palato. So the palate, is, which is part of the maxilla, palatoglossus. And so all of these tongue muscles that move the tongue forward, downward, backward, uh, and upward. 
all of them are innervated by cranial nerve 12, the hypoglossal muscle, except for palatal glossus, which is innervated by uh, cranial nerve 10, which is the vagus nerve. So the next thing I'm going to add are the esophagus muscles. So these are the ones in blue. And the one in light blue is just going to be the uh, constrictor muscle. Uh, just, just so that it doesn't confuse you, I just put it in a different color since it is, uh, it seems like it's multiple muscles. So we have the, let me add the labels. So we have the constrictor muscles. So basically the constrictor muscles uh, go in between the uh, hyoid and thyroid and cricoid and it continues on, on downward as the esophagus, so it's more as a smooth muscle down into the esophagus. And we have the palatal, palatal pharyngeus. So everything over here is basically the pharynx. Palatal pharyngeus. We have the salpingo pharyngeus. And salpingo is just basically the auditory tube. We have the stylo pharyngeus. And so all of these muscles, basically all of the esophagus muscles that help elevate the pharynx and larynx uh, during deglutition are innervated by cranial nerve 10, which is the vagus, except for stylopharyngeus, which is innervated by cranial nerve 9, which is the glossopharyngeal, uh, cranial nerve uh, glossopharyngeal. Okay. And that's important to note, okay, because number uh, cranial nerve 9 has only one muscle innervation which is stylopharyngeus. Okay, I'm just going to add in a little bit of fascia. You can just, just to round it out. So we have the buccopharyngeal fascia and the prevertebral fascia. So it's called prevertebral fascia because right over here is going to be your uh, cervical vertebrae. And then the buccopharyngeal fascia, which is right behind your esophageal uh, muscles. And then in between these two uh, fascia, we're going to have something called the retropharyngeal space. And basically why it's, this is important is because if it gets punctured, a uh, liquid can uh, go into this space and then go all the way down the mediastinum. Okay?